In conclusion, kokuhaku is a way to express that you are serious about the relationship. You might be thinking, couldn't you just understand that from the atmosphere or your feelings? This, from my point of view, is a result of the and welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. One of the strange cultures in Japan is kokuhaku, isn't it? When watching animated movies, there are often scenes of confessions, where a person tells another person that they like them and wants to date them. Many viewers have asked me how it actually works. As a Japanese person, I've always taken this custom for granted, so I wanted to use this opportunity to analyze it. So today, I will explain the three reasons why kokuhaku is important in Japanese culture. The reasons will get more and more important towards the end, so I hope you can check out all three. And as you know, in my videos, I try to explore everything from a cultural and historical perspective. So I'm sure there'll be interesting discoveries in this video that other people rarely talk about. Keep in mind, however, that this is an opinion from a 20-year-old Generation Y person, as cultures vary greatly from generation to generation. I've heard that other countries have kokuhaku culture too, so please let me know in the comments what it's like in your country. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on travel in Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. One, women want men to show their readiness. Many Japanese women want men to properly kokuhaku before going out with them. One romance magazine surveyed 500 people and found out that more than 90% of women said they would like to be confessed to. And data from a dating app showed that more than 70% of the 800 young people who are dating started a relationship after a confession. In conclusion, kokuhaku is a way to express that you are serious about the relationship. On the other hand, if the relationship continues without a confession, many people seem to feel anxious, thinking, is this just a physical relationship or am I just for fun? You might be thinking, couldn't you just understand that from the atmosphere or your feelings? This, from my point of view, is a result of the collectivist social trait of the Japanese people, which I've explained many times in my past videos. Unlike individualistic societies, which build trust among people through communication between individuals, collectivist societies do it through the structure or system of that society. In other words, it is a relationship of trust that says, you and I will both follow the rules of this society so we can trust each other without talking. In a collectivist society, people avoid individual communication as much as possible because they don't want to stand out and become a nuisance to the group. Specifically, in the case of Japan, this was especially necessary to unite to overcome emergencies caused by the many natural disasters and to adapt to the social system that was built during the Edo period. This is why Japanese people take manners and rules very seriously. It's how we communicate in collectivism. In other words, one of the characteristics of Japanese people is that they're not good at communicating with other individuals and have a hard time trusting others on their senses. This is why they can't be reassured unless their partners say directly, I am serious about our relationship. Anyone watching this video who wants to date a Japanese person may want to confess their feelings at an early timing if they want to be with that person more. Two, the existence of the purity ideology. Then let's go even deeper into Japanese history and culture. I mentioned the Edo period earlier too, but since that era, the Ie system has been important. The Edo shogunate, the samurai government, defined that the smallest unit in society is not individuals, but groups of families and businesses. This means that if someone in the group causes a problem, it will be everyone's responsibility. This was the government's plan to force people to keep each other under surveillance and restrict others' actions so they won't do anything strange. This is why almost all marriages in Japan are arranged. Historically, it is very recent that free love had become the majority. Love was not something that individuals had the right to decide, but it was something the whole Ie group was involved in. Because in case a child was born between a couple who were not arranged, it would be a great embarrassment to both families. 
even until my parents' generation. Living together before marriage was considered a big no-no. Purity education has been long practiced in Japan to teach young people that sexual relationships are something that should be avoided as much as possible. And even today, the delay in sex education is still a problem. There are remnants of such strict ideas about the relationship between men and women. And confession exists as the minimum discipline to overcome them. It means that a person who is not ready for a formal relationship must not deprive the other person of his or her purity. 3. The desire to clarify their position. The third reason is like a combination of the first two. But the Japanese are people who always want to clarify their position in society. This is not only because the relationship must be clear within a collective society to make the system work, but also due to the very strict hierarchical relationship built due to the teachings of Confucianism. And of course, the one who applied Confucianism to Japan was the shogunate, the samurai government during the Edo period. This is how Bushido, the aesthetics of always obeying superiors and dedicating their lives to them, was born. Japan today, of course, is not ruled by any samurai anymore, but it is still a society that's very difficult to communicate if your position is not clarified. For example, when two Japanese communicate, using or not using keigo, the polite language, is a big difference. This is the deeper reason why Japanese people can't quit using business cards. Because people's attitudes will greatly change depending on where that person is in the company. They want to exchange name cards as soon as possible to talk more comfortably. This is exactly the same with love. If you are dating, your age wouldn't matter and the couple will be in the same position. But to really trust that, you need some kind of proof. In other words, many Japanese cannot fully trust someone unless they are in a formal relationship. Then lastly, today's conclusion. I explained the three reasons why Japan has the culture of kokuhaku before dating. 1. Women want men to show their readiness. Kokuhaku is a way to express that you are serious about the relationship, and many Japanese women want men to properly confess before going out with them. Japanese people are relatively bad at individual communication, so they cannot be reassured unless their partners say that they are serious about the relationship directly. 2. The existence of a purity ideology. Since the Edo period, Japan has had an especially strong group ideology. So if an individual causes a problem, it will be the responsibility of the whole family or group. This is why purity education has long been practiced in Japan to prevent children to be born between unmarried couples. There are remnants of such strict ideas about the relationship between men and women, and confession exists as a minimum of discipline to overcome them. 3. The desire to clarify their position. Due to the very strict hierarchical relationship, Japanese people struggle to communicate without clarifying each other's position. Many Japanese cannot fully trust someone unless they are in a formal relationship. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If this video helped you to deepen your understanding towards the kokuhaku culture in Japan, please hit the like button to help me boost this video to more people. And please check out all my other activities inside the description box. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. Questions about Kokuhaku is definitely one of the questions I get the most, by the way. And I was uh, thinking about myself, about my own experience, you know, when I started, da started dating Harumi. Um, you might have heard from all my previous live streams or uh, videos and such, but Harumi and I actually started dating on the day we basically went out to have lunch together for the first time. Yeah, it was three days after we met for the first time, actually. Yeah, we met on a certain day at an event. Yeah, an event held in Beijing. Um, and just three days afterwards, uh, because I could speak English and she spoke perfect Chinese, we were like, yeah, let's be friends. We can, you know, teach each other the languages we speak. And three days afterwards, we went to have lunch together. And even though we had went to go lunch together, we went to a cafe afterwards for six hours and went karaoke for another three hours and went to a convenience store to grab more beer for another hour. And then she came over to my house and then we were awake till like, you were 4 a.m. the morning, we were watching like three movies. And yeah, it was like, you know, it's really, really obvious that you're going to be dating properly, right? Yeah. But still, I do remember that uh, inside my room in my dorm, actually, I was looking at that place on. Um, I actually did do the kokaku to Harumi too. Yeah. 
And that was the moment when Hanmi was like super surprised. Yeah, she was freaking out like, are you serious going to be dating? You know, because we just met, you know, we just met today basically. And because uh, the first day we met, we just talked like a few times, you know, and uh, just for a couple of minutes and that was it. So she was super, super freaking out. But again, yeah, it's something important, you know, because if I did not do the confession, you know, um, I'm pretty sure Hanmi would have not been known when the uh, relationship had actually started. So it was the same for me too. I've never ever even considered starting dating someone like, you know, um, without a confession, like not just my, by myself, somebody else too. I mean, if, if they started dating, I would absolutely ask them who, who did the kokuhaku first, you know? Yeah, who did it to who, you know, kind of thing. So I guess most in most cultures, that would be only when you're going to ask someone to marry you, maybe? Yeah. But anyways, uh, please let me know in the, uh, the comments about your culture, too. Thank you so much for watching this video.